So a year and a half ago, maybe even longer, there was a uh, there is a YouTuber by the name of Mike, Mike Winger, and uh, he is a prominent slash popular YouTuber in the Christian circle. Now, he made a video about a heresy TikToker who said Jesus was racist for that whole incident with the woman and he called her a dog, all right? Said he was racist and she confronted him about it. And Mr. Winger made a video and criticized him and explained how he was wrong. Okay, that TikToker replied. He, I want to use the C word here, okay, guys? Confronted Mr. Winger. And Mr. Winger made another response to him. Now, Mr. Winger also, you, you, I'm going to use the C word again, confronted him. But then in the video it said, this will be my last video on this because I don't want to start something with this guy. Now, this is the one of the biggest lies the church has told us as believers in Christ. They really have, and this is what really gets me annoyed, is that at some level, they're telling us that confrontation is bad. Mr. Winger was right to confront this man. This man was lying. This man was creating false truths. He was basically, his entire congregation is going to hell because they believe in such obvious heresy and such obvious untruths that it's about Jesus and his teachings and the gospel itself that it's it's just there's no other way to put it no other term for it his parishioners are going to hell there's nothing we can do to stop it unless those people leave him and whatever but Mr. Winger was right to I'm going to use the C word, confront this man because of what he was doing. It was, Mr. Winger was righteous, he was correct, and yet he said, no, I'm going to stop. Instead of moving forward in a righteous and uh, meek way, he said, no. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to start something. I don't want to confront this. This is not what I want to do. That is what he did. Now, I don't have anything pro wrong. I don't have any problem, Mr. Winger. I um, watched his entire Th Romans series, thought it was good. I stopped watching him after this episode because I thought it was... Because this is when I started seeing what the church was. And this, and like I said, this is the biggest issue. One of the biggest issues, if not the biggest issue I have with the modern church. Is its lack and disinterest. And dis... Disassuasion from, ready to see word again, confrontation. And it's, it's, and it's everywhere. It's on literally everything. So a couple of days ago, I posted a video called The Church is Dead. And I mentioned that the church didn't confront. As a matter of fact, it has conceded ground on a lot of things. Um, and I stand by those words. And I still think that. 
and, and this I'm just going to kind of go in further about the confrontation part today and the major component I want to get at is that confrontation is good it is good for two reasons one it's good for the pastor or priest to confront you on your sins I should say us, actually, us and our sins, and you, us, to confront them on their interpretation of things. I'm not saying all interpretations are bad. I'm saying if it's obviously wrong or it's a straight up misreading of it, we should confront them. And today I'm going to start with us and how we need to be confronted on our sins because that is important too one and two like i said the uh we need to conf we need to confront them the pastors more and i don't get where this whole thing started with this um live and let live type vibe that the church is giving out love we gotta love people what like no love is we don't need to have a love like the emotion no love means not to hate in the bible like don't hate them love them have empathy for what them but don't don't not confront them like no that's not that's not at all what it means and for them to twist, for them f for decades to twist it and make it so we can't confront obvious things is ridiculous. So, and when they say the Bible, there's no confrontation in the Bible, the Bible preaches love, where do they get this? Let's talk about the good book for a second, okay? God confronts Adam and Eve about eating the fruit. Uh, Abraham confronts God about just destroying um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Moses confronts the Pharaoh, which causes the plagues of Egypt, the ten plagues of Egypt. You got then you got Elijah confronting the uh, followers of Moab and Ahab. Then you got. After that, then you have David confronting Goliath. You have the entire chapter of Nehemiah 13. You have um, God literally f f uh, uh, confronting um Confronting Cain about his killing Abel and his uh, subpar uh, offering. Then you got literally the entire gospel, all four of them, Jesus confronting literally everybody about their, what they have done wrong, how they have been doing it wrong, to the point where the Pharisees had him crucified. He confronted lawyers. He confronted the Pharisees, other religious men. He confronted people on the streets, whether it be good or bad. He confronted demons. He confronted everybody. And like I said, the Pharisees crucified him because of the confrontation. So I don't, but then you then to continue, let's talk about the apostles, shall we? They didn't, they didn't die from old age. They didn't die from being nice. 
they confronted people. They can conf they pushed so hard on their confrontation where Peter was crucified upside down. John, I'm sorry, James killed by sword. Andrew was martyred. Philip converted a wife of a Roman proconsul and was put to death for it. You, uh, Bartholomew was mar martyred. Matthew was stabbed to death. Thomas was stabbed to death. Uh, James the Lesser was clubbed to death, slash stoned. Simon the Zealot is unclear, but he was martyred. Philip was martyred. Matthias was martyred. Paul was beheaded by Nero as well. The only other, the only one that survived was John, and that's because he was he because God had to give him the Revela Book of Revelations, and yet he was still he still was punished for his confrontation. He was jailed, stoned, clubbed, ran out of cities. Same with Paul. Paul had it worse because he had to do it with the Gentiles. He was. Stoned, clubbed, ran out of cities, jailed. That whole thing with the Romans, and the the uh, when he was in Jerusalem, and the whole that whole thing where he was arrested, and he was both citizens. That whole thing. Back to Paul again with Paul. The, his entire letters, which is like a good chunk of the Testament, New Testament, Romans, Corinthians. Theolo the, uh, the theologians, all of them. He can. He not only confronted the churches, he rebuked them and told them what they were doing good. He did both in those letters. I keep, forgive me. I don't remember which one it was, but he kicked out a man. For sleeping with his stepmom, his father's wife. He said, let the de demon devils have him. We should do that more, by the way, and we'll get into that later. But still, the whole thing is ridiculous that the Bible is, has nothing but, is nothing but confrontation. Jesus, again, revelations, man, comes back with a sword and his with a sword and a robe dipped in blood on a white horse to do what? Sing Kumbaya by a fire? Are you kidding me? Like, what? No, he's going to confront the father of lies and he is going to win. He has to confront him first, though. And yet we can't confront anything and anyone for any reason? Are you kidding? So, when I say we need to confront our pastors when they do something wrong, when they, we need to make sure they don't dive into this utter BS when it comes to what other, what people want. We can't let these pastors think, oh, I need to be nice. I need to preach niceness. I can't, we have to be nicer than God himself. We can't allow um, anyone to feel unwelcome. Yes. Yes. Confront them. Say, hey, you are misreading whatever chapter or book you're reading that day. Or ask him why he thinks it's, why he's interpreting that way. How does he read that? So you can get, either understand where he's coming from, or you can say, no, that's wrong. And the other, and that's vice versa. Somebody said that when, when treason prospers, no one dare calls it treason. That's the same with sin. When sin prospers, no one dare calls it a sin. And the churches do not confront us, their parishioners, on our sins. Because they don't want to offend. They don't want to hurt our feelings. They don't want us to feel unwelcome. We have to... That's not their job. Their job is to have us repent. Have us... 
be accountable to Jesus and to God for our actions and our mistakes. And by repenting, have the chance to be forgiven. Which we don't deserve, but we still have that chance. And it's re absolutely nauseating that because they don't want to hurt the feelings of the sinner, us, that we are no, we are no longer held accountable for sinning. And that is the crux of the matter with the now confrontation. Because, like I said, it works both ways. If sin is prosperous, no one dare calls it a sin. And if the local, the local suburban wife who goes to church every Sunday but also goes to a drag queen show with her kids and the church doesn't say anything because she's a good in good standing with the community that's wrong that's a sin the church needs to confront her and if she refuses let the demons have them throw them out if she's not willing to repent throw them out the church needs to be trimmed of its of the wolves in its ranks whether it be parishioners or pastors and priests because what is happening now is unsustainable and what is happening now is unrealistic and it's just bad for everybody involved and if nobody can see it if you can't see that then maybe you are the problem and maybe you need to remove yourself from the church in whatever capacity you have. It's not a, this isn't a, this isn't a nice video. This isn't a good, this isn't a, this isn't a, uh, happy-go-lucky message. This is me telling you that the church needs to change. And to change, it needs to... We need to cast out... For lack of a better term, the legion within it. And it doesn't matter if it's somebody going there to fake pray just to be there, who treats the church as a Sunday social club and just wants to be there to look good while not believing a word of it or then going to straight to a... pride parade or whatever and then or it's the pastor who just says oh you're you're enough god is love and basically telling you that you're fine when you're when you're not things need to change and it, and it needs to start with us we need to hold each other to account and we need to hold everything Oh, never mind. Remember, if you're going to sin, sin boldly.